Hi guys, it's Chris Hayden here and welcome to the very first episode of the Midas Touch Favourites. I'm so excited about this new series and I hope you are too. The Midas Touch Favourites is a new monthly series which is designed to analyse and debate my personal favourite TV shows and movies alternating between the two each month. I've already selected the 12 titles I want to showcase on this new series. I'm having a great time making these videos and I really hope you lot enjoy them. Kicking this series off is a show that I absolutely adore. It's something I'm sincerely passionate about and that is the mesmeric Friday Night Lights. <laughs> I chose Friday Night Lights as my first video for a number of reasons. Firstly, because it is one of the best shows of all time, no questions asked. Secondly, because it's one of the most underappreciated and underseen shows of all time. And thirdly, because unbelievably, 2016 marks the 10 year anniversary of the debut episode. I can't believe this show started in 2006 and it's already light years ahead of most things that are being produced today. The loose plot of the show follows the trials and tribulations of a small town Texas high school football team and it covers the friends, family, players and coaching staff. But Friday Night Lights is about so much more than that. At its core, at its root, this is a show about big hearted people in small town America. And one of the things I really wanted to do with this video was to explain the reasonings behind why Friday Night Lights never really garnered a sizable audience and had a really, really difficult time. Something which, in truth, is a cardinal sin because it's television at its absolute finest. The show was developed by director Peter Berg, who many people probably know from things like Battleship and Lone Survivor. But he also made the theatrical movie Friday Night Lights, which starred Billy Bob Thornton, which was an excellent movie in 2004. But adapting the film and adapting the novel into a TV series was possibly the best creative choice any company, any production line has made ever. That might sound big praise, that might sound brazen, but honestly, there isn't a single show that's quite like Friday Night Lights. There are shows that have similar themes, there are shows that have similar ideas, but there aren't any shows that actively showcase the practices and perfection of this series. I mean, I've watched this show through four times now, and it still gets me at every single point it's supposed to. It gets me emoted, it gets me enraged, it gets me excited, it gets me enthralled. It's something that's so potent and something that's so brilliant and it deeply saddens me that not enough people have watched it. The show started on the 3rd of October in 2006 and aired on NBC. It aired for two seasons before really hitting some problems. The difficult thing Friday Night Lights really faced was slotting time. It was aired as a primetime show, so between 7 and 8 p.m. Pacific Central in America. And a lot of the things the show covers are very dense are very honest, are very confrontational. It doesn't shy away from things that render life and things that render people human. And that clearly was often a tough pill to swallow for modern day audiences. After the second season where the ratings were so poor, the show was very close to being canceled. And thankfully that didn't happen. However, the only way to save the show was to move it to another network in which NBC moved it to their direct company, Direct TV 101, which basically runs on NBC reruns and rebroadcasts. For English audiences, it's kind of the same as Channel 4 deciding this is not acceptable for us, we'll put it on E4. The show managed three further seasons on Direct TV and ended on the 9th of February 2011. I'd like to read you a quick excerpt from this book, A Thousand and One TV Series You Must Watch Before You Die. So here's the pages about Friday Night Lights, and I'll read you the excerpt. 
The fact that Friday Night Lights was never a mainstream hit may be counted as one of the greatest crimes in broadcast history. If ever there was an opening statement to something that would make a person be interested, that is it. Peter Berg's five season trawl through middle America, seen through the fortunes of a high school football team, is world class. But its brutal and honest outlook was perhaps too uncompromising for primetime NBC audiences. Friday Night Lights is more than a sports drama. It's a social document which examines the disaffection of youth, high school funding, racism, corruption, and how the fortunes of a team render the morale of a small town. And that statement is so true because Friday Night Lights is about a lot more than football. If you don't like American football, to me that's mad because it's an utterly incredible sport. But the point is, this show is about so much more than football. It's about people. It's about place. It's about pride. It's about things that actively affect and actively engage people. And for that, it cannot be commended enough. Let's talk a little bit about the cast and the characters. The show is led by Carl Chandler's coach, Eric Taylor, who takes on the massive task of taking over and coaching the Dillon Panthers. The team are as important as job prospects. The team are as important as the health service. The team are as important as a good education. What the Dillon Panthers represent is an identity. They are more than a team who passes a ball very well. They're an outfit which gives a place a sense of purpose. It gives a place a sense of well-being. Coach Taylor is an enormously realized character and he is somebody who is able to ground people. The coach's wife, Tammy Taylor, is played by Connie Britton. And together the pair have a very intimate and very heartfelt way of connecting to younger people. And they do this through respect, they do this through honesty, and they do this through understanding. I legitimately cannot think of a better on-screen couple than Coach and Tammy Taylor. I, I really can't. I mean, if anybody can actively think of a better on-screen couple, a more complete, a more rendered couple, please comment below and let me know. But honestly, I don't think there is one. They are so dynamic and so assured through every single frame of these five seasons that I'm struggling to think if a couple could ever even manage it now. The pair have a daughter, Julie Taylor, played by Amy Teagarden, and throughout the show you see her grow and change, you see her interests develop, you see her ideas and her identity shift, and she becomes a very complex, very important young character, growing up in a world that is utterly revolved around sports and utterly engulfed by this idea. And then we have the players, of which there's a lot of them. If you don't know, American football teams tend to have between 50 and 52 players. You have offense, you have defense, you have special teams, you have benched players. There's a lot of people who occupy that field. Thankfully, we don't have 50 odd players in Friday Night Lights because that would be a bit ridiculous, but we do have a main selection of people in the Dillon Panthers. One of the core players is Matt Saracen, played by Zach Guilford, and he is the Panthers quarterback. And from the very first episode, Matt Saracen faces adversity. He lands the role of quarterback after the star QB, Jason Street, suffers a horrific injury which leaves him paralyzed. So as soon as he starts playing, he has the weight of the town on his shoulders. Can he carry on what Jason Street managed? Is he as good as Jason Street? How could they replace Jason Street with this guy? Instantly, the pressure is on that character and the pressure stays on that character throughout every single life choice he makes. He's a character you really feel for, you really care about. He's someone you actively understand. As well as being the leader of the pack at the Panthers, Matt Saracen also has to care for his elderly grandmother, Lorraine, who is suffering with dementia and gets increasingly worse as the seasons progress. His father is stationed in Iraq and his mother has abandoned him. So he has basically got the responsibility of another and he himself is trying to learn and adjust in his world. You also have Tim Riggins, played by Taylor Kish, who is kind of a common as dirt guy. He's an excellent running back who has a serious problem with alcohol. He has issues with family. His brother is a low life criminal. And everything that influences Tim Riggins' ideas and identities are usually corrupt. They're usually wrong. And he has to try and decipher his way through goodwill and has to try and keep himself on the right path. You also have Brian Smash Williams, played by Gase Charles, who is one of the few black players on the Dillon Panthers. 
And being a black person in small town Texas means there's going to be racial prejudice and he's going to face issues and he's going to face mistreatment and judgment on a regular basis. Smash is an incredibly confident player, he's an excellent wide receiver, he's very boisterous about himself and about his abilities, but underneath it all he's a very fragile character, he's someone who knows his place is deemed lower because of his colour, he is someone who knows he and his family are oppressed, and that just comes out in real tender brilliant moments. You also have Landry Clark, played by Jesse Plemons, who is kind of the dunce of the team, he's probably not good enough to be a panther, but he enrolls in the team and he ends up getting a place, usually on the bench, but as the show progresses he does become a special teams punter. And he is the everyday nice guy, he is the type of person who gets friend zoned by all girls constantly. He puts himself out for people, he makes himself available, he cares and he tries and often he is pushed back and often he is underappreciated. But there's plenty of girls in Friday Night Lights too. You have Lila Garrity, played by Minka Kelly, who starts out as a Panthers cheerleader but progresses into a really, really vast and dense character. Someone who opts for different paths to try and accommodate the way that she feels. And it makes her an incredibly unpredictable presence and someone who you're never entirely sure of what their motive is and what their ideas are. You also have Tyra Collette, played by Adriana Palacki, who is kind of like Tim Riggins. She comes from a pretty white trash family and she's kind of downtrodden, but she's somebody who is very assured of herself and someone who wants things and someone who isn't willing to take the path of her family, her mother, her sister, and be dependent upon men, and be dependent upon getting by on whatever means is necessary. She wants a career, she wants an education, she wants to be somebody. You also have other characters who appear later on throughout the show, including J.D. McCoy, played by Jeremy Sumter, and Vince Howard, played by Michael B. Jordan. And indeed, all of these players have family members who are incredibly relevant to everything they do, they have friends, and all of these people influence them on and off the field. And that's the reason why the show is so unique and why I think there isn't another program quite like Friday Night Lights. You might watch a high school drama where kids do things and they have problems and they have issues, but rarely are the parents and the people around them quite as important. One of the only examples I can actually think of would be the OC, in which the parents are utterly integral to everything that's going on with the children. In Friday Night Lights, the parents are as important, perhaps even more so, and their influence spans more than just the main cast. They render and regulate people who just pop up here, there and everywhere. Tammy Taylor's progression throughout Dylan High School, for example, shows her in such interesting, such honest lights, and shows the difficulties that she has as an educator and as someone who has to interact with youth of all aspects and all age ranges and all abilities. And Eric is more than a coach to these kids. He's a father figure, he's a role model, he's a guidance counsellor, he's a mentor. He's able to engage with these people and commit to them at any time. Not just on the field, not just in the locker room, not just at big games. On the street, in the supermarket, in the car wash, at the parking garage. Every single place that Coach Taylor goes, he will often have to interact with somebody who is relevant to the team. And what that does is it builds bridges really, really subtly building. You don't notice it, you aren't aware, but the show is elevating and moving every single second. And when something big happens, it will either leave you devastated or elated because you'll realize just how deep-seated your rootage and your connection is to these characters, to this team, and to this town. Also, the dialogue in this show is utterly incredible. I mean, if somebody made a book of Coach Taylor inspirational quotes and gave it to kids, we wouldn't have as many idiots. I can say that with quite a lot of confidence because some of the things that he says just hit you like a ton of bricks. And I think actually, without sounding really preachy or without sounding really stupid, there's quite a few invaluable life lessons people can learn from Friday Night Lights. A big one is that winning isn't everything and losing doesn't make you a failure, which is something people face time and time again, day in, day out. It might be something as mundane as a job interview. It might be something as basic as a promotion. But these things are little battles that people face all the time. And this ethos is applied to so many different scenarios throughout the show and, to be honest, can be applied to most people's day-to-day -day life. Also, what makes the show so unique is the way it's filmed. It has this really earthy and ethereal 
documentary style footage. It often shakes, it often gets up close into characters' faces. It isn't afraid to make everybody in the show feel vulnerable. It isn't afraid to make everyone in the show feel human. Because that is the real, real brilliance of Friday Night Lights. Everybody in this show feels real. There are certain sequences throughout the show where characters will open up and they'll just leave you breathless. I mean, I won't spoil some of them because some of them are just amazing. But there's an episode in season four called The Sun. Oh my God, there's a sequence in which Matt Saracen is eating dinner with Coach and Tammy and Julie, of which he's dating. And <sighs> yeah, every time. Oh my god, every time. The music as well, which is something that's very, very integral to the show, is largely produced and scored by the band Explosions in the Sky. And often the music is really beautifully layered and rendered to the sequence that's happening. It feels engaging and it feels emotive. And it does it without being intrusive, without being over the top. Often the music is very subtle, it's just percussion or it's just keys. It's never usually really leery lyrics, it doesn't often have big songs, and I think a lot of that is because the show has such a small budget. A great place to start with the music is the opening theme titles, composed by W.G. Snuffy Walden. And I played it earlier in this video, and it's just beautiful. In those 40 to 50 seconds, you're able to feel happiness, you're able to feel power, you're able to feel pride. I can't think of another show that manages anything like that, I really can't. I cannot truly express to you just how wonderful this program is. I can't truly express just how much I love it. It is something that's very important to me and I care deeply about. It's a show that really, really deserves more viewers because it's absolutely incredible. If you're ever, I mean ever, looking for something to binge watch on Netflix, make it Friday Night Lights because you can thank me later. And that concludes my very first episode of the Midas Touch Favourites. I really hope you enjoyed it guys and I can't wait to get the next episode rolling. If you like this video, smash that like button and give me a thumbs up, that'd be absolutely awesome. And if you haven't already, ensure you subscribe to the Midas Touch because there's loads of great content here and tons more to come. And I'll see you very soon indeed for another video. But until then, I'll see you later.